Hello and welcome to the Inheritance and Traits Unit Internalization video. My name is Sean Tamarisk of KIPP, Massachusetts. This unit asks the big question, what makes us who we are? And the anchor phenomena for this unit that students will study is, students will work to understand the inheritance in packs of wolves in Yellowstone Park. The unit begins by asking the question, why is there a pack of wolves with one wolf, wolf number 44, that looks so much different from the other wolves in the pack? Wolf 44 is white, while the rest of the wolves are gray and black, with only tiny bits of white. Before we begin this mystery, please make sure you've read and annotated the unit overview and the other following documents. Please also print out the focus tasks, end of the unit assessment and unit internalization guide, and have a pen or pencil ready. This unit is important because it's students' first experience understanding the foundations of inheritance. Why is it that we look the way that we do, and why doesn't everyone look the same? There's all sorts of variation with traits in the human species, and it's important students understand. There's also variation of traits within animal species. For example, students might have the misconception that all snowy owls are exactly identical when in fact they have different they have different spot patterns on their fur, slightly different behaviors, and slightly different variations in other traits, such as beak size. In this unit, students are introduced to DNA for the first time and learn that it has instructions for making us who we are. It serves in a, as an important foundation for understanding Darwin's theory of evolution and natural selection later on. Hashtag Wallace was first. And understanding the tree of life and the fact that all organisms are ultimately related. Great, let's dive into each chapter. Uh, the first big question is, how are organisms the same, and how are they different? So they start with a scavenger hunt in the Handbook of Traits, looking at the life cycles of different species that they choose. So a, a kid might choose the life cycle of brain coral to look at, and the life cycle of pygmy seahorses, and then identifying similarities and differences. They might look at spiders. Ooh. They might look at kitty cats. Ah. And compare and contrast differences in their life cycles. Life cycles are not a central focus of the unit, but they are an important standard to hit. After this, students look at a new book, Blue Whales and Butterclubs, once again, looking at how different organisms, different species are different, but then starting to zoom in into one individual species and seeing how there are differences even within a species. Lesson four is optional, uh, in which students explore how bird songs are different across species. So we're not just looking at physical traits, but we're also looking at behavior. In lesson five, students look at both physical and behavioral characteristics of bears and try and sort them into two separate species. In lesson six, they look at human traits and, and realize that within a single species, there are many, many different variations. And in lesson seven, they look at other examples of species and variation within a species. For example, pygmy seahorses, spiders again, ooh, and kitty cats. So comforting. Oh, except for this cat right here. Oh my god. Lesson eight is an optional lesson to continue to reinforce the idea that there's variation within a species. Students look at cat variation. By the end of the chapter, students have come to fully understand progress build one, the idea that traits vary within a species. Students return to the mystery of the Elk Mountain Wolf Pack and why Wolf 44 doesn't seem to have the same traits for full co fur color as the other wolves in the pack. In the Progress Build 1 focus task, students choose a claim as to why this might be, and then write an explanation using different pieces of evidence to describe why. There's a word bank and a checklist for students to check their work. Go ahead and complete this task now, and then check back here to see an exemplar response. Pause now. Great, take a minute to read this exemplar and check it against your own. Make any revisions to your own that you might need to. Pause now. Note that the exemplar has evidence from different tasks students did during the unit, such as talking about pet bird moths, pygmy seahorses, and human variation and traits. Great, on to big question number two. How do organisms get their traits in the first place? Students dive in by reading the book The Code, which introduces students to DNA and explains that it has the instructions for making you who you are, for giving you your physical traits. It explains that you get half of your DNA from your mom and half of your DNA from your dad, and that you're a mixture of their traits. Students then look at examples from animals, such as these deer, and decide what type of offspring are possible with certain traits with each set of parents. Next, students look at silly monsters in an example to decide what monster babies are possible from two monster parents. Ultimately, students need to understand, for Progress Build 2, that organisms get instructions for traits from their parents. 
For the Progress Build 2 focus task, we return to the wolf mystery, and student's job is to make a claim about which family tree Wolf 44 is a part of. Who exactly are his parents? The wolves with the white fur or the wolves with the black fur? Once again, students choose a claim and then support that claim in writing with evidence and an explanation. Go ahead and complete this task now and then check back here for an exemplar response. Pause now. Great, here's an exemplar response. Take a minute to read it and compare it to your own. Pausing now. Note that this explanation uses evidence from the book The Code, as well as evidence within the family trees in the focus task to answer the question and support the claim. Great, on to big question number three. Are all traits inherited and can traits change? They read the book How the Sparrow Learned Its Song and learn that although all sparrow species sing, in some places their songs sound one way, and in other places their songs are very different. So they learn about traits that are actually not inherited, but are a product of the environment, such as learning to play the piano. They learn about decorator crabs, which actually take objects from their environment and use them as camouflage. They then model this with little monsters who change depending on their environment. They go back to the handbook of traits and read information specific to how traits are affected by the environment, such as the fact that peppered moths can change color over time depending on environmental changes. All this leads up to students understanding Progress Build 3. Some traits are determined by inheritance, some by the environment, and some by both. And some traits can change over time through learning, growth, and experiences. For the Progress Build 3 focus task, students return to the mystery of the Elk Mountain Pack. In this case, they're trying to figure out why Wolf 44 is actually middleweight. It's heavier than any members of the Bison Valley Pack, but lighter than any members of the Elk Mountain Pack. Students use information about hunting styles, about how many pounds of food the packs eat per day, and about how much each wolf weighs to realize that Wolf's 44's weight is a combination of both its inheritance of a smaller size from its Bison Valley Pack parents, and the fact that it eats more than most members of the Bison Valley Pack, making it bigger than most members of that pack. Go ahead and take a minute to complete the task and then check back here for an exemplar response. Pause now. Great, go ahead and compare my example to your example. Go ahead and pause again. Note that this example includes two pieces of evidence from different books and makes reference to the sources that are shown on the focus task, including graphs and tables and pictures. Great, on to the end of the unit assessment. Just like in other units, each question on the end of the unit assessment labels what progress build it corresponds to so you can see what percentage of your class mastered each progress build level. Here's a sample question for the unit assessment that assesses student understanding of progress build one. Take a minute to read it and write down your answer. Now check my answer here. You'll notice that students are expected to be able to name similar traits such as these and traits that are different such as these, using the word variation. And they should be able to explain the fact that traits can vary within a species, as it's asking in number two. Now here's an assessment question for Progress Build 2. Take a minute to read it and write down your answer. Here's my answer. Remember, this goes along with Progress Build 2, the idea that organisms get instructions for traits from their parents. Now here's a unit assessment question for Progress Build 3. Take a second to read the question and then answer it. And here's the answer to this question. The fish in the large pond is bigger because it had more food or space, causing it to grow larger over time. So that recognizes that traits can be determined by inheritance, the environment, or both. In this case, the environment. There's a couple of optional lessons after the unit assessment, including the book Scorpion Scientist, which profiles a scientist who ex explores traits within scorpion families, and uh, an investigation that students can optionally carry out related to Sparrow songs. All right, thank you teachers for taking the time to be as prepared as possible to teach this unit for your students. Here's some final steps for KIPS teachers that I recommend for everyone else as well. 